Welcome to What's Your Story? Glad to have you with us. Every week I bring you a guest who's both authentic and genuine, who's going to provide insights and practical advice for you to apply in your life, whether it's professionally or personally. Today we're going to continue on our role around the idea of management consulting. Leaders often find themselves overwhelmed by volatility, uh, ambiguity. Who do they turn to when they're in those kinds of situations to find their way out? It's scary. They live in a world where they have to win, they can't lose. My guest today is Jan Stefanski. Jan is the co-founder of Janus Consulting. Jan has a well-earned reputation as someone who rescues leaders by turning their company strategy into operational reality. He's done it multiple times, he's quite good at it, done it for multiple years. Jan, welcome to What's you. Your Story. So let's get right into it. What is it that you do? Well, what I do is, my focus is really to help my clients make their clients successful. And I do that by making fuzzy things clear, Charlie. What was that? I do this by making fuzzy things clear. <laughs> okay. And the way, the way this works is the areas that I work in are, are twofold. I call it the macro level, and that's where like the rubber meets the sky. And that's your mission statement development, your um, vision, your values, and your strategic planning. And I also take it down to the micro level, which is the execution level, and that's where the rubber meets the road. And for a lot of people, that, that's the biggest challenge because all of a sudden you're talking about work process design, you're talking about how do you make the teams actually function, you're talking about how you do change management, you're talking a little bit about how do we sustain this culture? And how do I do that also? I do it in, in four ways. I do it as a facilitator, as an educator, as a coach, and many times as a confidant. I've known you for a while and you appear very passionate about the work you do for your clients. It's about your clients, it's not about you. You've made that abundantly clear to me. So, what is it that you do? My, my, my passion, and, and, and I've been around for a while, my, my passion is really to help people and organizations be successful. I mean, that's the net of it. That if they're successful, then, as I said before, then their clients will be successful. So my reach goes out in terms of leverage. And, and the why I do it, uh, when, when I reflect on it, I've been doing Janus Consulting since 1995, and, and, and the reason I do it is that I look around and I say, hey, what's, what's happening out there? And let's say, let's take, make it the business world, and again, it could be the nonprofit world, religious, academic, but what, what's happening out there? And in general, I, I see a couple things. In terms of the situation, I see that two things. Everything is the number one priority. We have to get something done. And what it comes down to is, right or wrong, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna get it out the door. And I'm gonna push along, because I can't do all these priorities. But again, I don't, I, not I, I, the client, I can't kind of get those priorities straight. The second thing is, the other thing I see is there's no, there's no time for reflection. And, and uh, uh, someone coined, and I don't know the individual's name, but she called it CPA, continuous partial attention. People don't have time to actually reflect on what they're doing. One of the key distractions, obviously, is your cell phone. Um, and, and, but you got this combination of everything's important, there's no priorities, and you're constantly interrupted, which makes it challenging. So the other mantra that deals with this, and again, this is, this is the environment that I'm talking about, is that there's a squeeze on managers. Now, uh, to me, when that happened, it was 1995. I can almost, re I do remember, not the specific date, but the year. There was a big influx of the concept of business process reengineering, how you can do more with less. And that was the mantra, how are we going to do this? So all of a sudden, we flattened organizations. And it was good. It was good in a lot of respects. We flattened the organizations, but I think we went to extremes. And what happened was there was a squeeze on management because you're, you're developing a process and, you, and the cons computers were there and you didn't need this, com um, this uh, communication going back up and down. And there was a squeeze on the managers. And what was the squeeze? All of a sudden, maybe I had six, eight people reporting to me. And all of a sudden now, I got 15 to 20 reporting to me. And on top of that, I was asked to do something from an operational perspective. 
So all of a sudden there's a squeeze on management. They're running, they're not managing anymore actually. They're just kind of putting, putting their time and trying to talk now to 20 people and they're also doing something operationally. The second thing that happened, and it happened really right at the beginning of the Great Recession, now we're up in like 2008, all of a sudden, one of the major things to go, I think major things to go, was that I call it the, the, the dearth of development. All of a sudden, people aren't spending money developing the people, whether they be at the senior level, because they're trying, to, they're trying to just survive, and I get that, all right? So I'm saying those two things are happening. There's a squeeze on the management, there's no development going on, and then all of a sudden, it's, it's the idea that we have to now all of a sudden focus. All right, so what do we do? And I say to people, Charlie, I say, how's your Latin? And they say, what do you mean, how's my Latin? <laughs> and I say to them, well, let's, let's think about this. Do you knew, know who Rene Descartes was? Now, some people do, some people don't. But he had a famous saying, and it was in Latin, it was cogito ergo sum, which means I think, therefore I am. Great. What happens now in this world, this business world, it, the new phrase is cogito ergo est. And what does that mean, Charlie? It means I think, therefore it is. Ah. So what you have is you have a squeeze on the management, you have people that really aren't um, educated and developed the way they should be, and all of a sudden it's, because I, as a senior management, think it's going to happen, it magically happens. You brought a, an interesting cartoon with you uh, that I think may touch upon this. Arif, would you bring that cartoon up for a moment and then you can uh, address sure. it? Exactly. Yeah, this kind of plays that out a little bit. That, and I always enjoy this. And again, let me tell, tell the, the people that are watching, you can flip these. But what, what you see right in front of you right now are, are two, um, let's say, trophy cases. And one has strategy, and you can, see, you can see the different cups, you can see the different ribbons and things like that. But you look next door to it, which is execution, and all of a sudden, it's in shambles. Now the reality is you gotta do both. But the thinking a lot of times in most organizations, especially from a senior management perspective, is we'll do all the planning and the people will execute. And that, to me, is, is one of the big fallacies in terms of actually being successful. You got to do both, but there's too much emphasis on the strategy part where the rubber meets the road. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, okay. So, so that that's kind of the setup, all right. And, and uh, but but what's what do I bring to the table? It's like a Venn diagram. That's kind because of, the answer is why do I do this? Well, that's kind of what's out there, and I'm just cherry picking a few things to explain it to you. But what, uh, what I do is I, I actually, my skill is I've worked for a lot of large and very good companies. I've gotten tremendous, tremendous experience from both the companies and what they did and also the colleagues that I worked for. So I have that. The second thing I have is- Who were some of those companies? Well, they were pretty big. It was IBM. It was Conrail, which is now part of CSX. It was Coopers and Librand, which is Price Waterhouse Coopers, and the big one was Digital Equipment Corporation, which some of the people in the audience might not be familiar with, but when I was working for them from a, um, um, an equity point of view, if you added up what the outstanding stock was, they were the biggest company in the world. I learned a lot in all three of these areas. In, in, in IBM, I learned how to fundamentally sell. At, Conrail, I was manager of application development. I learned how to do, actually lead people and make things happen. And then when I was at Coopers and Library, and I, I learned, maybe it was like a three leg, legs of a stool, I learned how to, how to consult. So I had these different vantage points. And then when I went to Digital Equipment Corporation, I kind of pulled them all together. And that's where I was introduced to uh, business process reengineering. And that kind of took off for Janus Consulting. So it sounds to me that you're perfectly equipped to go into a company because you've had these three different yeah. aspects of your own development. Yeah, I, I think that's real. Uh, I smile because um, people say I'm a consultant, and I, and I say, well, <laughs> I say, how old are you? I'm politically incorrect, how old are you? You can't be a really good, you can be a content consultant at an early age, but you can't be what they call a process consultant, or one that kind of deals with management and direction 
if you don't have the experience. So you're right, Charlie, I was blessed. I was blessed with my experience. So you have these two things. You have this need, you have, have this um, uh, d d uh, supply that I provide. And the last thing is really the mindset. And my mindset is I've really been blessed in what I did and now it's time to give back. And so when I thought about it, how can I best give back? It was really maybe through coaching and mentoring people. And that's what I do with Janice Consulting. So, so I was lucky, the, the so stars aligned. So people bring in you in, there's a business problem, but they also get the consulting and the mentoring of their people, is that part of it? Hmm. Well, I, I guess, yes, you, it, well, it depends. And, and who I- is a true consultant. <laughs> No, it depends. It really, it, that's right. Because, and one of the things just to share with the audience is uh, I'm a generalist. I don't, I don't have a vertical focus. My focus is, is, is horizontal with the organization. And so talking about the clients that I deal with, it's kind of a, a whomever, whenever, wherever. So I like to work with organizations that they need me and sometimes it's they need the coaching, sometimes they need the facilitation, sometimes they need the education, and sometimes they just need a, a confidant to talk to. It depends on the level you're talking about. So who is an ideal client for you? Well, the audience, <laughs> as they're listening to this, probably know a lot of leaders who, at one point or another, run into problems. So who's an ideal client yeah, for you? I, I smile at that question because I was asked by a friend of mine, uh, we were talking, we were having a couple beers and he said he was talking about his his profession and he said and he told me what his ideal client was and I said wow and he says what's your ideal client and at that point in time I was doing a lot of work with what was business process reengineering was um, mapping uh, uh, systems or, or, or organizations what they do and how they do it and, and kind of helping them redesign that and he said what's yours and I said it's someone who's failed twice at least <laughs> and I said, whoa, and, and now that I'm older, I said, that was a pretty cocky response and as a negative response too, uh, but it was true. Uh, but now when, when someone asks me, I, I kind of say, well, it, it's, it's someone who, who has, it's the basics. They, they have accountability for something that's a high priority, that's urgent, that they're going to sponsor and I fit into their value equation. All the other stuff, a lot of, I would say, uh, consultants may have. I mean, it's, it's pretty big. But for me, an ideal client is I can actually help them. I'm not window dressing, I'm not as good looking as I used to be, but I'm there to help them be successful. And the way to do that is make sure that they're kind of aligned to what they want to do, and I fit into that alignment for success. So we need to take a break. We have to go to our sponsors, but when we come back, can you share a story of you in action with sure. a client? Sure, sure. Right. Love so, to do that. Thank you. We'll be back with Jan Stefanski in a few moments. Shelter dogs aren't broken. They've simply experienced more life. If they were human, we would call them wise. They would be the ones with tales to tell and stories to write. The ones dealt a bad hand who responded with courage. Do not pity a shelter dog. Adopt one. Say we've got grit, and we'll take it as a compliment. Because it's our uncommon drive, our spark within, that brings us together and sets us apart. We are temple made. And when others take shortcuts, when others take breaks, when others take the easy way, we take charge. I work 13 hours a day, six days a week. So when I'm off the clock, I gotta get stuff done. So when I need a snack, I need something healthy, tasty, and easy to eat like wonderful pistachios without the shells. They're protein powered, delicious, and great on the go. And that's perfect for me. Thanks, Liz. A woman without a lot of time. 
Whether you're a gourmet cook or just want to eat like one, visit Rostelli Market Fresh, your home for the freshest locally sourced ingredients to please everyone who loves great food. Our organic meats, quality seafood, and free-range poultry are cut fresh to order. Chefs create culinary-inspired prep foods made fresh every day, which pair nicely with our vast selection of fine wines and spirits. Choose from handmade pastas, artisan cheeses, organic produce, and grocery items, all from the finest purveyors. Rostelli Market Fresh, from our family to yours. RVN TV is a platform for people of any industry to share their story. Over 285,000 viewers are tuning in to RVN TV shows monthly. We guarantee a great experience that you'll be sharing with everyone you know while increasing your personal and company's brand awareness. But what is your brand? According to Forbes, it's a combination of your logo, your product, your design and feel, and your personality. Did you know that aside from being a guest, we offer even more opportunity to boost your brand? Adding your company logo and website on screen during your interview will allow viewers to recognize your brand instantly. Incorporating images and video clips is another great way to showcase your product during your live segment. Let viewers see how good you really are. And most importantly, there's you and your interview. For less than the cost of a newspaper, direct mail, or a magazine ad, you can leave our studio and within 48 hours have a permanent digital copy of your live segment to link to your social media, embed into your company website, or use in email marketing. Investing in your brand is so very important, and we can't wait to have you as a guest. Welcome back to What's Your Story. My guest today is Jan Stefanski, co-founder of Janus Consulting. And he was sharing with us how he works with clients. And I asked him, can you give us a specific example? So time's yours. Okay. Um, what, one that I like to talk about is, uh, uh, I'm gonna be talking maybe a couple, but one I like to talk about is a, is a larger client because uh, people like to hear about larger clients that maybe were successful in a change. Well, th this was a large chemical company, and I was talking uh, or supporting uh, especially chemical engineers, and, and their, um, their objective was to take $50 million out of their operating budget and $50 million out of their expenses. So to me, that was a lot of money to be, I'm sorry, a, lo a lot of benefit to be associated with. So what we did is we helped them in two areas. We helped them with the concept of business process re-engineering, uh, which is basically for those who don't understand that, when you, when you do something in your organization, that's a process. It could it be something in accounts payable, it could be something in manufacturing, it could be something in engineering. And when it's not going right, you have to re-engineer it. So that we were brought in to do that, and we were also brought in to bring the change management part that was associated with. So this is where we get a little bit of a blend with what we do. It's just not process re-engineering, it's also the change management that was associated with it. And, and that engagement over the course of maybe 18 months, we helped them l reach out to other organizations to kind of focus on what is it that's going to make them most successful. And what they came up with is how they did their budgeting, which was very kind of, kind of stepping back. It was kind of the root cause. And I find that very exciting because here we're dealing with the people, uh, chemical engineers, who've never exposed to this type of thinking and acting. And because we helped them out, and when I say we, my co-founder and I were doing this, because we helped them out, they were successful. And, and what we're, my co-founder and I, what we're so proud of is we were kind of focused, uh, or um, profile, I should say, in their annual report, the work oh, we wow. did for them. Yeah, it was kind of slick, kind of slick. What kind of role do you play? with the client, once you're engaged, what does Jan, what's the role that you play? Yeah, I guess that, that's, that's an interesting question that, I, I guess to use a metaphor, I, I think I, I'm, a, I'm an experienced guide with them. Uh, I support a balancing act that they do. And, and Speak to this graphic, yeah, would you? Um, I grabbed this graphic and, and it happens to be an individual, it happens to be male. It could represent a person, or it could re represent a group of people. But it's a balancing act to go from where you are to where you want to be. 
And this one I thought kind of presented it pretty well. It said, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening with the skills of the person or the individuals and also what's happening in the environment. So what does a guide do? Well, a guide talks about where is it that you're going? What's really your destination? And if you kind of put that into business terms, it's really like, what's your focus? What's your end goal? What's your purpose? What's your deliverable? Right? The second one is how you're going to get there. And again, playing, playing the experience guide, how, how are you going to get there? And what's that roadmap? And commonly known, that's called a strategic plan. So we've got where we're going. We have a basic plan for it. Now they talk about what are the challenges in getting there. And what that really is, it's talking about what are we going to be doing in terms of our overall game plan to get there. And what it comes out to is the challenges along the way come in, come in two varieties. They come in that you know they're going to be there. And again, being an experienced guide, I can tell the client you're going to experience these types of situations that you have to get through. And there's a second type, and this is to me the more fun type, but to the client I don't think it's as much fun. It's what happens on your, on your journey and it's an unexpected challenge or opportunity. So we help them with that. Also, when, you, when you're on a trip and you're, and you're the guide, you're also talking about the team. Who needs to be on your team to get you where you want to go? And in order to do that, that team has to work cohesively and that team has to have a good leader on it. And that, that would be, in this case, the, the, the executive or, or the individual. The four, fifth thing is you got to take supplies for the journey. I mean, we can talk about where you're going, how you're going to get there, what problems you're going to have, what's the team, but you have to have supplies for the journey. And in this analogy, your supplies for the journey are the skills and the techniques that you need to be successful. And the last thing in a journey, especially a scary journey, which, which in most cases when you're in a change, clients feel this way, is that they need a companion, they need a confidant, they need someone that they can lean on. And if you're at the any level actually in an organization, but definitely at the higher, higher levels or the executive levels, levels, they have no one to speak to. And so they need someone, they need an ear, they need somebody that they can bounce ideas off. And that's the other part when someone says to me, what values do you add as, as an experienced guide? That would be the, the one, sometimes that's the most critical. It's someone they can lean on because they're going into change where they've never been before. One of the things that you did in preparation was you provided me with a series of comments that clients made about you. Uh, and, and what it said to me is, hey, this is the difference this fella made in our life. So share some of that with the audience. Okay. Uh, what, what, when that one, uh, what I do is maybe annually, I go back to my clients and I, I give, give them one basic question. I, I ask them, where did Jan add value? And they respond to me. And so I'm going, to read, I'm going to read some of the responses to you. So bear with me. They're short. But it will give you a sense on, on the areas that I, I help them with. And, and, and they're very um, uh, important to me because it lets me know that, yes, I am adding value, but it's not value only in one spot. For instance, it's just not value on ROI. It's just not value on you, you, you showed me problems that I wasn't going to, going to see coming up, um, but it made happen. So here's one. Here's the first one. Jan's approach is pragmatic, systemic, and collaborative. He understands the need for measurable results. What I like about that is pragmatic. The idea that what I, when I work with a client, I, I'm a very well-read person, and I'm a very experienced person, and I know there are certain tools and techniques that will never work in their situation, so I try to be practical with them. I'm systemic in the sense I look around, not just the vertical maybe they're dealing with, or, but I, that, that, it's either a, a blessing or a curse. I think and act systemically. And collaborative is that I try to get the uh, organization involved. So I, I like that. The next one was really that he doesn't have a cookie cutter approach. Well, that, that really uh, warmed my heart because I, I do believe that most people have similar problems. I mean, when you talk to somebody, I have a problem with my strategy, I have problems with my team, I have an opportunity in a new market. At that level, pretty much all the clients have the same thing. But when you get down to their culture, their, their company, the actual organization they're in, the actual industry they're in, then it has to be tailored. So I, I like that idea that there was no cookie cutter. Um, the last thing uh, that I want to highlight with you is that 
and I'll read this to you, we draw upon Jan's previous business experience, learning from previous consulting engagements and his in-depth understanding of a wide range of tools and techniques to serve our most pressing needs. I really like that because I, what I said to you earlier, what I bring to the table is a lot of experience and a lot of tools and techniques to make things happen. And the last thing I want to share with you with what the client said to me, and, and it was kind of a side remark. It wasn't this formal value add, but it was a comment that was made to me. I, I was walking the hallways of one of the client's um, offices and, 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 and a number of people I support, and one, one of the people I wasn't supporting exactly that day is she walks up to me and said, did someone call 1-800-CALL-JAN? And, and I, I thought that was great because here it is that when, when they feel comfortable enough with me that if they have a problem or an issue, they can call me. Now, I don't have actually 1-800-CALL-JAN as a telephone, but the concept was great, that I appreciated that they were saying that if they felt they had a need that they thought I could satisfy, I was trusted enough that they would make the call. And that's the word. They know you, they like you, they trust you. That's yeah, the perfect yeah. formula for the kind of work that you're doing. Um, you just didn't overnight become a management consultant. You mentioned that earlier. Right. So could you go a little bit about that journey? Because there are a lot of people that want to get into consulting, but they just don't have the prerequisites. Yeah. For those of you who want to do it, it it's a great journey, but you got to understand the basics going into it. Let, let me tell you my story, which might not be yours, but I want to touch on things. One, one is that, that the, um, first of all, you got to know how to sell. And I learned that at IBM. The second thing is you have to have some baseline content. And I learned that a lot when I was in, 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 in Conrail with the application development. And the third thing you have to learn is how to consult. And what I did, I worked for Coopers and Librand, so I was groomed by very experienced people on how you do the basics or the fundamentals of consulting. Not the content you're delivering, but all the things that need to happen. So based on that, I came out in, uh, again in 95, it was, it was an opportunity to get into this thing called independent consulting, but I had a leg up. But the reality is, I had a leg up, but there's a lot more to it. And a lot more to it is only when you experience it. So I would say, Charlie, that uh, becoming an independent consultant for me, the journey was that I was being primed, but I didn't know it. And when I made the jump, it was a jump, at least I had a pretty good springboard, but the journey's never over. I learn every day about how to be better in servicing my clients. And your clients benefited from that journey, it seems to <laughs> me. So listen, we have to bring this to an end. Okay. And I really appreciate how open and candid you were with our audience. They learned a lot today. So this is an opportunity for you to look into the camera and talk to the audience and make your ask, make your offer, whichever you want to do. Okay, well, well first of all, I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed the session here. And uh, I guess the ask of you is if, if you have a need, or maybe you have someone within your organization that has a need for an experienced guide who can help you make fuzzy thing clear, maybe I'm an individual that you should talk to. And when I say talk to me, what we can do is we can sit down, we can do this over the phone, face to face is much better for breakfast, maybe a cup of coffee. I just need to understand what it is you're really trying to achieve. And maybe I can help you and that would be a great match. And maybe I can't. And when I can't, I, I have a list of colleagues that I feel very comfortable with that I can refer to you to really help you with your problem. And that's what I'm all about is, is resolving your problems not growing my, my organization. It's more, I love to grow my organization, but if I can't, then I, I call on colleagues that will come in. So how, so how do they get in touch with you for that complimentary meeting? Well, there's two things. There's Jan Stefanski, I don't know if, they, I guess they might not show that, but it's Jan Stefanski and the telephone number is 610-996-1809. My email address is Jan, that's J-A-N, at Janus Consulting, J-A-N-U-S-C-O-N-S-U-L-T-I-N-G.com. Could you so give the phone number again? Sure. It's area code 610-996-1809. Well, Jan, I want to thank you for coming on the show. You fulfilled what my expectations were, and I believe the audience is going to benefit from this. Great. Well, thank you very much, and thank you. Again, next week... Another, what's your story? My guests will be authentic and genuine and offer insights and practical information that you can put to use almost immediately in your life, personally or professionally. So again, thank you for coming. 
and see you next time.